Well, hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to the shop. Today, we are going to undertake uh, a rather interesting modification to a Swiss Army knife. Um, so I got a couple things going on here that I want to try and um, I'm not sure all of them are going to work out, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Um, so what I really want to do is I want to do some changes to this guy right here. This is a, um, a Cadet, which is a 84 millimeter Swiss Army knife. Now this is a knife that I carried uh, pretty much every day for about a year. And there's a couple of things about it that I would change that would like make it into what might be my ideal everyday carry kind of knife um, and so if you're not familiar with this knife uh, you have the opener layer and then you have the big blade and you have um, this little guy which is a, a nail file and so the first thing I want to do to this knife is I want to change this nail file I pretty much never use this thing um, I have like zero use for it and the knife that I went to after this was uh, this knife which is a Pioneer X which is basically the same tools in a bigger beefier knife quite a bit thicker quite a bit more heavy uh, but then you add scissors so that's and this is a great knife for me it's just it's a little big I'm not I did, I'm not loving it so I want to take out the can opener and put in a small blade um, and then I want to sharpen that small blade um, so that it is better for whittling, uh, better for whittling in my opinion. So like here's an example of a small blade that's been modified to be better for whittling and you, you just kind of change the shape of that a little bit and I have a video on how to do that if you'd like to see that. So I'm going to sharpen this up like that and then I'll try to put that in place of the can opener here. Uh, which is going to be a little bit tricky because the thickness isn't the same. I'm going to have to create some kind of spacer. I'm not sure, but we'll figure that out. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, which will probably be the most ambitious part of this, um, is I want to try to put some scissors into the cadet. So if you're familiar with Swiss Army knives, you know that Victorinox has stopped making 84 millimeter models with scissors and they stopped doing that quite a while ago so you can occasionally on ebay or something find a model that has scissors in there um, and if you can find one of those and you're willing to pay the price that they go for it's really easy to get your set your hands on a set of scissors that can go into an 84 millimeter knife um, but the trouble is they're really expensive and hard to find at least that's how i feel um, so what i have done is this is a 91 millimeter set of scissors with the back spring and that hook that goes on the back of that um, which would you know like this is a Swiss champ that's what the scissors are like inside here is they look like this they're too big of course they're they're too long because this is 84 millimeters this is from a 91 millimeter so I'll have to shave it down and make it work and I'm not going to use this back spring or the hook um, because I don't I don't want the hook I don't want back tools on here I want a nice smooth back um, so what I do have is out of um, a recruit this is the spring off of the blade layer of a recruit, um, which is actually where this blade came from as well. So what I'm going to have to do probably is, I'm not sure, but I think I'll have to make some kind of spacer to go here, maybe. And then I might have to shorten the handle on the scissors a little, and I'm going to have to drill a hole closer up here so that it kind of shortens and compacts everything down. And then hopefully this can act as the spring on that. I'm not real sure if it's going to work out, but we're going to give it a shot. Um, and we may have to flip the scissors around or something. I'm not really sure how that's going to go, but we're going to see what happens. I also have the spacer uh, that came out of that recruit, which will hopefully come in useful. May have to adjust the shape of that a little bit. Um, and then we have some brass rod here that I'm going to have to make a little smaller to be the pins for this and the pins on the uh, cadet or pretty much any 84 millimeter knife i believe are 2.2 millimeters in diameter and if you can find brass rod in 2.2 millimeters that's fantastic i can't um, at least not without paying too much or having to wait you know a month for shipping because it's coming out of china or something so what i have is i have 332nds inch brass rod which if you convert that to millimeters is 2.38 so i'm 1.8 millimeters too big um, and i can fix that i just chuck this up in my drill press and spin it 
against a file or some sandpaper and just slowly shave it down and measure um, to get down to the thickness that I need. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to disassemble this cadet so that I can kind of look at some things and make myself uh, a jig to hold the components so I can tinker with the scissors and see how those are going to sit. Um, and then I'm going to use the screw holes from this to figure out how to make that jig. So to get started taking this apart, I have a spring-loaded punch here. I'm going to try to punch the center of each one of these pins and then I will drill those out. So if these are 2.2 millimeters, I need a drill bit that is just smaller than that. And so in my drill press right now, I have a drill bit that is 5 64ths of an inch, which is like 1.2 millimeters or something like that. So it's just a little bit undersized. Um, and we're gonna, obviously I wanna reuse these red scales because those are cool even though they're a little damaged. Um, that's, you know, that's what happens when you use and carry a knife. Uh, and that's okay, I'm okay with that. Um, so I'm gonna try to preserve those as best I can. And because I feel like this is the side that's a little bit more important, I'm actually gonna work on this side in case things get a little wonky. Hopefully uh, it'll be over here that I heard it. Center punch. So I drilled out the pins, but I'm not sure that's gonna be enough. So I'm actually gonna Use a little bit of an actual countersink here and see if I can take a little more metal off on the top. Not too much though, because I don't want to hurt the scales. Alright, so let's see if we can get a close up. That's what they're looking like now. Alright, so we have anvil, leather with hole punched in it, over the hole in the anvil. I'm gonna center over the hole, got a nail that we're going to use to hopefully drive this through. Well, I guess we're going to have to drill some more. Alright, so I'm back at the drill press. We're going to drill in a little farther and see if that helps. Now let's give that a try. Hmm. There we go. Alright, so apparently it's easiest if we start with the center pin. Now I got the pin out. Part way anyway. We're going to grab onto it with the vice grips. Give it a pull. There we go. One down, two to go. Probably should have taped it all together. So here is the cadet fully disassembled, all parts laid out. You can see here's the back scale, um, the larger blade, and on the larger blade, between the blade and the scale is this little washer. And then on this side you have the nail file, of course, and this little spacer with the uh, key ring loop. The larger of the two back springs goes with the blade layer, then there's a liner, and then you have the opener layer with the smaller of the two back springs and the top scale, and that is it. Uh, so now what I want to do is I actually want to make a jig that kind of looks like, so I'll show you. This is my my jig for a 91 millimeter Swiss Army knife and you can see it's got holes that would line up with the, the scale holes so that it would, you know, so you could build the knife on top of that. So I want to make a jig that matches these holes uh, on the other side of my board here. Now in order to make that jig I need to make some brass rod that is exactly the same diameter as these pins. So let's see. I think it should be 2.2 millimeters uh, and I'm sure there's some tolerances there. Uh, but this is giving me 2.17 in that neighborhood. Uh, and then if we can actually measure a hole, let's see if we can actually get in and 
Yeah, that's giving me two six. Which I'm sure is not incredibly accurate. There we go, that's giving me two th three. So I think I want to make right around 2.2 millimeters because that's what I believe those pins are supposed to be. So I'm going to make 2.2 millimeter rod out of this brass rod, which is 2.3, which is just a little bit too big, I think. Um, but I suppose we could see. Yeah, too big. Can't get the parts to slide in. So uh, definitely got a. Well, look at that. The can opener will. But not that. Yeah, so we're going to take this down to about 2.2 millimeters. We're going to do that over on the drill press. I'll show you how I do that uh, using a file and or sandpaper. At the drill press, all I do is take a piece of brass rod that's, you know, a decent length here and uh, chuck that up in the press. And don't reef it down in there too tight because it's brass and it will deform. But you get it in there a little bit. I get a file. You could totally use sandpaper. I just like the way a file works personally. And then I like to wear gloves because I don't like to get the filings on myself. Turn it on. Now it's spinning that way so we want to brace the brass rod on one side with your finger or fingers. Put the file on the other side and just slowly shave it down a little bit at a time. And this will take a couple minutes but it's a nice slow process and you're not likely to go too far. Actually, do I have my file backwards? I do have my file backwards. That's why it's not going. All right. Then every once in a while, stop and check. Well, now I'm getting about 2.35, so we're getting closer. Now, if you had a metal lathe, this would probably be a lot easier. I don't have a metal lathe. It's looking good up here. It's about 2.2 right in here, but it's a little bit more down here, so I just got to do more at the bottom there. Hmm, not quite there yet. Got to go down just a little bit. So now that fits the knife blade. So let's see what that's going to tell us it is. 2 .1, 2.1, 2.13, 2.1, 2.16. So I think 2.2 might be on the big side if you're looking for brass rod because that didn't quite fit. Now we're down to about 2.15 give or take and that seems to be working. So I think that'll work. Next thing I want to do is I want to get marks on my board here so I can make my jig. So to make the jig I'm just going to use the, uh, the holes from the scale and just mark out where I need to drill. So in there. And then I'm going to drill those out real quick over on the drill press with a uh, 330 second drill bit because that's just a little bit bigger than that, I, than the two millimeter, I believe. So I'll be right back. All right, so holes are drilled. All right, so I've got my jig set up here, got the little pins in, and then I've got the back scale on there, and then the blade layer with one spacer. And then the next thing to do is figure out how to make this next layer with the scissors work. Um, so the back spring, I think I mentioned before, this is the back spring off the blade layer of a recruit. It's the same size, shape, everything as the, the back spring on the blade layer of a cadet as well. It's, it's that same back spring. Um, and so the reason we're going to use that is it's the closest one I can find to being the same thickness as the scissors. So if we look here, this is uh, 2.3 millimeters and the scissors are about 2.5 millimeters and so that's about as close as I can get um, and just for reference this is the back spring on the opener layer 1.95 
and then this is the thickness on the openers to to so they're not exact which is not surprising I mean they're really close but point here being I think this is going to be close enough in thickness to the scissor layer that it's going to work out and then I'm going to need something to create the spacer over here and maybe that'll make sense once I get it assembled but this like I said this is 2.3 millimeters and this is the can opener I believe it's off of a pioneer farmer might be might be off of a farmer or a farmer x that i worked on previously i don't quite remember but anyway i picked it because it's about this is close to the same thickness as i could find um so it's 2.2 millimeters so a little bit thinner but i think we can make that work so anyway thickness aside let's try to put this on here and you'll kind of see what we got to figure out now so we're going to put the can opener facing this way and the scissors generally the nail nick on the scissors is over the top of the back of the big blade so they go on like this generally and so you can see here's what we're working with the scissors i'm going to move the hole on the scissors we're going to drill a new hole let me get something to point with we're going to drill a new hole right about here i think which means i'll then have to grind the back off of this to shorten that a little bit and then I will also have to take a little bit off the handle so that it doesn't run into this and it can go all the way down and close. I don't think I'm going to have to shorten the scissors. I might have to take a little bit off, uh, just a little bit, but I, I hope I don't have to do that. Uh, and then, I'm obviously not going to leave this can opener here. I'm just going to use like this much of it to create a spacer uh, that will hold this spring back on this side. Um, so if we open these scissors out like that, and then this, I think I'll actually do it this way. So if you've looked, if you look down into like, so here's my Swiss champ, and this is the scissor layer. If we look down in here, let's see if we can kind of get a look. This right here is the scissor layer, and you can kind of see the way that that spacer that backspring is shaped. Now that's all one continuous backspring. We're trying to kind of mimic that with two pieces, which it'll be okay. It'll just keep this spring under just enough tension to create the tension we need on this on this side. Um, so th that should work out. So we're gonna just try to kind of create this same shape, which is almost like a straight down and then a little bit of an arc that gives the scissors, if we can close these up, it gives the scissors a place to rest. You can see the tip of the scissors just meets that little spot right there and then kind of arcs down and that's where they rest. So we're going to try to kind of mimic that and make sure we leave enough metal that this is still stable uh, or, or sturdy enough. So what we'll take off is this bit here. Obviously we'll keep that side. So let's Let's see what that looks like. So this is going to kind of be a, a cut some, come back, test fit, that kind of thing, and we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, my method for cutting this, I think, is going to be a cutoff wheel with my Dremel. Uh, you could use a grinder and just grind a ton, or you could use um, like an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to use my Dremel because it's a little bit more precise, and hopefully I can kind of get the shape I really want there. I'm going to make the spacer. Then I'll drill the hole for the scissors and we'll kind of test fit and see what other adjustments we need to make at that point. Here we have my Dremel cutoff wheel, so we'll make that cut. Uh, I'm also going to put on some safety gear. I'll do that and then we'll make our cut. While doing that cutting and grinding, you probably saw me touching this paper towel that I dipped. Uh, in water onto the onto the little piece there. You, you probably want to do something like that yourself. Uh, just, you know, a little dip of water and then rub it on there, a little cut or grind. Uh, that'll just help keep from overheating the steel and blackening it, which would weaken it. So uh, we're going to give this a test fit here. We'll probably have to do a little more grinding on the top there once we get the scissors 
uh, shortened up a bit in length. So the next step, I guess, is to drill the drill the hole in a little farther up for this uh, on the scissor layer here. So got to decide how much farther up to take it. If I go too far, the trouble you run into is you won't be able to replace the spring on the scissors without disassembling the knife, which we can't go too far. Uh, you can see, and maybe I'll just have to make that sacrifice, that if I break the scissors, I'll have to drill out this pin, pull the scissors out, replace the spring, and go from there. That might just be what has to happen. All right, well, we're gonna have to for sure make the scissor spring inaccessible, but that's just gonna have to be the way it is. So let's go this far. So something like that. Grind away all this, grind away that, and put my hole right there. First thing I'm going to do is drill the hole, because drilling a hole in this hardened steel is not easy. Uh, it's probably a lot easier if you have all the right tools. I'm not sure I have all the right tools. I'm just going to use my drill press and a cobalt bit. I'm also going to put a, a starting you know, a punch there, uh, so i got a nice spot to start. So here's the progress that we have made so far in putting a hole in the scissors. And I probably should have realized this would be harder than I thought. This is a hardened stainless steel, and it's pretty brutal stuff, and a cobalt bit just does not go through it, and I don't have anything else readily available. Um, uh, I believe that if you had a carbide bit, it would go through this, but carbide bits are expensive and hard to find, uh, at least in a local way. You can get them online all over the place. But um, So we're going to try something a little bit more creative here. I broke a, um, a cobalt bit in trying to do this and so I've what I've done is I have chucked that up backwards in the drill press and just left the bottom flat stub sticking out and what we're going to try to do is called spot annealing and annealing is just taking the temper out of the steel and making it softer which hopefully will make it easier to drill is it possible that I will ruin the temper in the scissors yeah I suppose it's possible but I guess that's a risk I'm willing to take uh, and so Annealing is different depending on what metal you're working with, but if I understand correctly, to anneal this, the stainless steel that is um, used in these, you just need to get them really, really, really hot, like red hot, and then allow them to cool slowly. So my technique here is I've already got a bit of a dimple from some of the progress that I made. It's not very deep, maybe a millimeter if I'm lucky. Um, but I cannot really make much more progress, and it's probably because I work hardened it on accident. Um, so what I'm going to do is I got my drill press set up to spin as fast as it can spin, which for me on this beast is 4,700 RPM. Uh, and then I'm going to clamp this guy up in this vise so that I don't have to hold this because I don't want this to backfire on me. I think that'll hold it. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this baby on, have her spinning as fast as she'll go. We've got safety glasses on and all that fun stuff. And uh, when the tip gets red hot, we're going to give it just a second on the steel and then take it off and let the steel cool down uh, slowly. We're not going to quench it because if you quench it, like in oil or water, uh, you'll actually just reharden it, potentially. If you don't have a drill bit of the appropriate size that you're willing to sacrifice, uh, you could use a nail or some other piece of metal that's fairly hard and of about the appropriate diameter. Here we go. That got the bit red hot. Hopefully we got the steel hot enough there, so we just got to let that cool down for a little bit. Well, the scissors have air cooled, so they are now back to room temperature here. Hopefully I'll be able to actually drill it now. Uh, so I've got a brand new 5 ths um, cobalt drill bit in there. Give it one more shot. There you can see I finally got the hole through. It is not a pretty hole, especially on that side, but it is a hole. Spot annealing 
definitely helped, um, but I'm not sure that that's the best method. I suppose if I was going to do this over again, I would spend the time uh, waiting and money to order a, co um, a carbide bit uh, that would be able to drill through that probably a lot easier and wouldn't require the spot annealing. And um, I mean, I still broke uh, two drill bits trying to do that. So, you know, it's it worked. I'm not sure I would recommend it, but in a pinch, it is a way to get through some really hard metal. So, uh, that said and done, the next thing I want to do is I want to clean up that hole a bit with a really small bit on a Dremel here, and I will just, uh, you know, clean up the edges, take the burrs off. I'm just going to try to smooth out the inside there a little bit with a little sandpaper. Just going to try to roll it up as tight as I can and see if we can get it in there. Next thing I'm going to have to do, if you look, the spring here runs into the handle of the scissors right there. So I got colored in with black sharpie the the section that I think I'm gonna have to grind off in order for the scissors to lay flat without the handle running into the spring I'm gonna go slow might do a couple of times to see I don't want to have to remove any more than I have to alright so I'm over here at the grinder this is a half speed grinder with a 60 grit wheel and uh, I got a little bit of water here I'm gonna dip this in the water just to keep it from overheating and uh, we're actually just sitting on the floor because I don't want to clear off space on my bench for my grinder at the moment so anyway here we go Next we're going to have to shave a little bit more off of this spacer right here. Alright, next we need to grind off the back here some. And then we're also going to have to shorten this right here. We're going to have to take a chunk out right here so that it'll open all the way. So first we're going to figure out how much we need to take off the back. And to do that, I think we're actually going to use another tool as a template. All right, I ground the back down a good bit. See how that goes. I think we're going to have to do more. Yeah, that's, that's too much. It's not going to open and it sticks up past the outside of the... When the, when the scale's on there, it'll actually stick out. So we're going to have to take it down another notch. Pretty good notch, actually. But that's okay. And so when, we, when you're opening it, that hole is going to hit the spring, and I think it'll still work out. It'll just kind of uh, act almost like a half stop. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I think that's going to work. All right, now we got to shorten up the stop on the back there. Go remove the colored in part. Be right back. So I've been fiddling with the, the fit of the scissors along this section. Well, let me give me something to point with. Right along here. So I've got enough. I've gone just almost far enough, but you can see there's a little bit of a gap here. I'd like that to flush up a little bit more. And what that means is if you run your finger along the back of the, of the uh, knife here, the this spring that is on the scissor layer is sitting out just a little bit. Uh, so I think ideally I'll cut a little bit more like down off this edge right here, just grind a little bit more off right there so that the spring, so that the scissors can open just a little farther and allow this to flush up and hopefully the back to be flush then too. Um, honestly, if I stopped right here, it'd probably be just fine. This is more aesthetic than function at this point. Um, but I'm going to grind just a little bit more off right here, uh, and we'll see if we can get it even a little smoother. Alright, so I fiddled with the fit right here, and I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Um, the back of the spring still sticks out just a little bit when the scissors are out, but not not bad and that's probably good that it keeps a little bit of pressure on it because it makes it steady uh, you might look at this and think oh well that's that's getting really thin right there 
Um, and it is. I, I've removed quite a bit of metal. There was quite a bit more here initially, but I, I think something to bear in mind is this is not really... The only time this is really under pressure is when you're opening or closing this, and it's not really part of the tool, per se. Like, if this was a knife and the whole thing was being supported by this little bit, well, that would be scary, but... You know, when you're using the scissors, all the all the working pressures are up here, um, and so I'm not overly concerned about this, uh, really. And it seems, I mean, it doesn't really have any give or anything, so I'm not too worried about it. Now, the next thing I got to figure out is when closing. I need to probably s grind off this bit right here so that as it closes it automatically kind of closes up the scissor handle and keeps it all closed. Okay, so after looking at this for a little bit, I think the solution is actually just to flip the scissors. Uh, the spring has to stay in the same orientation because of where the pin is. It's offset. It's not actually centered. So I can't flip the spring over, but what I can do is I can take the spacer that was over here, put it over here, which actually still works. It sits at the same same height, essentially. Uh, but then, because it's elongated, like just because the spring is shaped differently, I think this is gonna end up working out. Because what'll happen is, so as I go to close the scissors right there, you can see the handle's gonna hit the back of the spring. And if I round this up a bit, It'll hopefully just, I'll just travel and close. Here, you can watch what'll hopefully happen. If I round this up, as the scissors come down, it, the spring will close the scissors, and at rest, they can sit right about there. So when I grind, I can't take off any more than right there, because I want it to hold the scissors closed. And that's gonna mean that the scissors are gonna open the opposite direction that most Swiss Army knives open, which is, I think that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. It's still gonna work, and I should still be able to get my nail into the nail neck to pull it open. The bottle opener will sit right here. Yeah, and there'll be just enough probably to get that nail neck. So I think that's gonna work out. All right, so test fit number one. That looks pretty good to me. I gotta round off these, because on this side, that's too big. And that's okay, because it's kinda ugly anyway. that's gonna work. Now that I've got everything taken apart, um, before I put it all back together and rivet everything, I want to polish all the parts. Now my main methods of polishing, I got a couple of ways of going about it. One is just a strop um, with a little bit of polishing compound, and then the other method is a leather um, wheel, I guess, that's uh, chucked up in my drill press that has polishing compound on it. And I do not remember where I got this, but I do like it. Uh, it spins, you know, 700 RPM is pretty quick. It's way faster than I could do it by hand. Uh, it's got a nice flat space there that I can work on. And you just got to be careful. You can get your tools really, really hot because it's spinning so quick. So you got to polish a little, take a break. Um, but that works well. Um, so between those two methods, I'll probably polish and clean everything up so that it's nice and clean and shiny. And then I will start to reassemble. Well, everything's pretty much as polished up as it's going to get. Uh, the blades... I'm going to finish sharpening once I got it all together because I find it easier to find the angles and stuff that I want when I actually have the, the whole knife. Um, but I think I had mentioned in initially that I was hoping to replace the can opener with a whittling blade, but there's a real trick to replacing the can opener with a blade. Um, it's not so hard to do on a bigger knife like this. Um, because you have a lot more space in here. But if I had done this with uh, like with this blade, getting enough clearance for the knife along with the can opener still being there, it just wasn't 
possible. I would have ended up with such a small knife that it would have been infuriating. Uh, so instead of doing that, I opted to uh, replace the nail file with the small blade, which works just fine. There should be plenty of room for that. Um, that's actually called a Cadet 2. I think they made that knife for a while. Um, and then I reprofiled that a little bit to the shape that I like for whittling. Um, so that'll mean I have a big blade and a small blade, um, and I can, you know, get by with that. So, time to start reassembling. There we go, that's what she's gonna look like once she's all together. Back springs look pretty good. Obviously this will be a little tighter. Uh, well, let's see what happens with the scissor layer. I think this will work. All right, time to Start peening. Ooh, I'm gonna have to polish up the back of that scissor a little bit. I must hit that with the grinder. All right, so here is my setup for peening. Um, what I have is just a cheapo Harbor Freight anvil, uh, and then this is just a piece of thin wood. It's actually oak, but it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be something that'll hold up to this. Uh, and that is just to act as like a spacer. So the idea here is you can peen one side of your pins outside of the knife if you want. I've seen people do that where they just take and they clamp the pin in a vise and peen the top down uh, and then put it in and cinch it down but I, I don't like doing that so what I'd like to do instead is peen them all in place in the knife and so what that means is you got to find a way to like support the knife with a little bit extra sticking out the bottom so that you can then cut that off and file it down when you get to that side but right now I'm on this side, so I need to work on this side. So this, the wood supports the knife so that while I'm peening, it also spaces up a little bit so that whatever deformation happens on this side of the brass, it doesn't matter so much because I'm going to cut that and file that down when I get there. So it just holds it up a little bit. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, and maybe it'll make more sense as I get going. Now the amount of brass that you want sticking up before you start peening, there's some debate there, but I think you want just a scotch over about a millimeter, so not, not very much. Um, and the way you do that is the first thing you got to do is you got to cut it and cut and Then you got to file it flat uh, You don't want to start peening on it when it has that cut edge because that's peaked and weird and you're gonna get a, Not a nice shape to the top of your pin And so I like to protect my pin with a piece of junk mail. Apparently this is uh, from Capital One. Thanks guys um, And I just put that on top of there so that I don't mar up my scale as I file and then file that flat. And that, let's measure. Is just a scotch over a millimeter of brass. And I think I want to go maybe just a little bit further, but before I do that, I want to I want to kind of seat it so that it's maybe not going to go any further down. I know as I hit, it's gonna slide through the knife a little and anyway. Uh, so I think that's, yeah, that's about where I wanna be. And uh, just a little touch on the file yet. One side's a little low. Now that we have a flat pin, I think we're ready to go. So for peening, I, I like to keep this in place. That way if I miss a little bit, it's not a big deal. And then my hammer of choice is just this little guy. It's like a little three or four ounce plum uh, ball peen. And obviously for peening, you want to use the peening side. Um, and uh, the idea is that you slowly tap, 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 and you go around in a circle on top of the pin. Uh, and then what you're obviously causing is the, that brass is malleable, and it's mushrooming out on the top and, and tightening up to hold that shape. So here we go. Now you, you could use a bigger hammer, uh, but I like to use this little guy because I'm less likely to do damage if I miss, 
and uh, then everything goes nice and slow. I know some more experienced people would probably grab a big Beasley 12 ounce or 13 ounce or, you know, I don't know, whatever, and go to town. Um, but I like the control that this smaller hammer offers. All right, we're gonna call that one good enough for now. Come back and give it a little more once everything's all done. Um, now I'm not, there may be an order that you're supposed to go in. I don't actually know. Someone will probably chime in and tell me. Um, but I, I started with the center and I'm gonna do the two outsides and then I'll flip over to the center and then the two outsides. Um, that's gonna be the way that I go. The nice thing about doing it on this side is if you leave too much, you can just pound it through. But on the other side, you gotta be more precise. We're gonna call that one good enough for now. There is a little bit of space there on that side, but I think once I snug up the other side, I, th I think that's gonna help. All right, so there's, there's that side. Time to do the other side. Now that side I'm just gonna do right on top of that piece of wood so that I don't damage the scales or anything sitting on top of the anvil. And that'll be enough resistance, I think. If not, I'll have to find a way, maybe just a piece of paper uh, underneath the scale. But I think we'll try it right on top of the wood first. All right, I think it's time to start working on this center pin. And I've got more like a half of a millimeter, about a, about a 32nd of an inch if you're using that unit uh, sticking up there. So not, not very much. Uh, because I don't I don't need that much so anyway um, here we go now that you're working on the second side you gotta start being careful about getting it too tight once it's peened you can take it too far uh, not as big a deal on this center pin because there's no moving parts here uh, but on these outside ones there those will matter because the moving parts will be affected by how tight that pin is I think I'm getting a little too much bounce on that wood so we're gonna do it right on top of the just a little bit of paper to protect the scales as I go. All right, I went ahead and filed down the other two pins, and now it's time to start finessing the, the peening there so that I know that the tools open and close appropriately. So once I get those started, I'll take the tape off and we'll see how it goes. That could be tighter. That can definitely be tighter. All right, so that. Hmm, so compare that to an actual one. Hmm, still loose. Well, I've got it all together, and I gotta say, I am not perfectly happy with this. Um, and the reason why is I can get, I can get all the tools. I can get the, I can get everything to be, you know, it's usable. Everything, everything comes out. But it doesn't have the snap that you would like to see on a Swiss Army knife. So like on this one, you can hear those go down the way they should. Everything's nice and smooth. What's lacking is that snap here, especially on that tool. Like you pretty much have to push that down yourself. Now I could, that guy does it. And I could be okay with the scissors not doing it because that's pretty pretty far from what it was originally, but I was asking a lot there. But there's really just not quite right here. And I think the issue, there's a couple of things. Well, and also the way, if you look really close, there's a gap right here. You can see light through that, especially if I get the white paper behind there. And that's because, I think I mentioned the scissors are a little bit thicker than the back spring right here. So I thought maybe it would just kind of work out, and well, this is what I get for just thinking it would work out. Uh, it doesn't. It's it's too much, and I'm asking too much of the situation. Uh, it would be fine, I think, honestly, in terms of like durability, but I just don't like the way it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble the whole thing. Oh, and I got one other issue. The scissors sit a little close to the big blade. Um, it. I mean, they don't. I think they maybe touch it just a little bit. But I would like to have a little more clearance in there. And so I think my solution for that is going to be, I've actually got the two spacers here. And you can see 
This spacer over here is the original one from the cadet, and this one over here is from the recruit. That recruit had scales, so it's built a little different. It wasn't a cadet, and it has thicker spacers. And so I'm actually going to swap the two spacers around because then that will hopefully result in there being a little more space between the scissors and the big blade right here. Uh, it's not going to be a huge difference, but it's a little bit. So it's just something else that might help the situation. I guess the solution is going to be taking it apart. And the other thing that's going to allow me to do is to really be careful about the pins. These pins are the ones that I used in the... Um, in the jig that I made and so maybe they're a little marred up and bent which may also be contributing to how things are opening and closing so I'm going to be really precise and careful about the pins and make sure they're good and polished before I put this back together with them so um, we'll just disassemble now let's make some new pins there we go all right so now it is time to thin down the scissors a little bit so the back spring for the scissors is about 2.36 millimeters I want the scissors to probably be about the same amount of thickness. So we've got to take about 0.2 off of there. And I've been thinking about this, and I think what's going to make the most sense is if I shave off more on this side. So when this is all assembled, this side is going to be closer to the big blade. And if you recall, when it was together earlier, it's rubbing a little bit right here. So I'm afraid if I thin it down here, it's actually going to effectively move this whole thing that way. Well, I really want to move it this way, if that's at all possible, or at least not go farther that way. So I think if I shave more off this side than that side, that'll help it not move farther. So I'm going to try to do the shaving on this side, or the grinding. So I'll take this over to the grinder and take try to take just 0.2 off on this side, and probably only from about here back. I don't really want to affect... Um, the mechanism here or anything like that and I think there's enough room inside there that it'll be fine I just want to get the space around where it's going to need to move inside the uh, closing the, inside there I need to get that clear so using my diamond plates I did a little bit of grinding uh, if you want to call it grinding you know just setting it down on the plate going back and forth nice and slow and uh, thin to this down a little bit, just on this side. You can kind of see, polished it up pretty good, but you can still see some of the marks. And you can see, I, you know, I worked mostly right in this area. And so, we are down to, at the pivot, 2.33 millimeters. And it's a little bit more, 2.32 right there, but then 2.4 up there. Which I think is fine, because right here 2.31 we are real close to the same thickness at the pivot so I think that'll get rid of some of the issues along that edge next reassemble and um, I don't really think you need to watch me do that again so I'll come back when we're all done so one thing I've discovered is since I um, tightened up the pins a bit made them a little bit bigger and they fit better with pretty much everything except the hole in my scissors it's just a tiny bit too small. So all I have done is taken a piece of 320 sandpaper and rolled it a little bit, pushed it through the hole, and I'm just slowly sanding back and forth, kind of around in a circle to enlarge in the hole a little bit, and I am really close. So I've got her fully reassembled, and uh, I'm much happier. I'm much happier with the way this turned out. Um, definitely worth taking it apart and putting it back together again with better pins and just some really fine adjustments and moving the bigger spacer between the blade layer and the scissors um, that just added just enough space between the scissors and the big blade that it doesn't rub and there's actually just a little bit of gap in there so um, the tools open and close pretty well um, not quite as much snap on some of them as I would like but some are really nice like that's got a good feel to it. The big blade also has a nice feel. Uh, the scissors are a bit snug, but that's not not terribly surprising given how much I adjusted and, and put two non-matching parts together. And um, I mean, you know, I'm pleased with it. It's okay. And you do got to give it a little bit of help to get it to go down. But I mean, that's not terribly surprising how much modification has happened here. But I do have a pair of scissors here and they are a full size 91 millimeter scissor. And I would 
if I ever have to replace the scissor spring, I will, you know, this, this spring right here that makes the scissors open back up again, I'll have to drill out this pin and then pull the scissors out uh, to replace that spring. But, I, you know, hopefully I will never have to do that. If I do, it's not that big a deal. I can do that myself. So, um, the other, the small blade turned out nice. Looks good in there. Pretty good snap. So, all in all, really, really happy with how this turned out. Learn from my mistakes. The couple of things I would definitely do different. I would definitely buy a carbide drill bit for drilling out the scissors rather than trying to do the spot annealing and then drilling with a cobalt bit. Um, the carbide bit will just drill right through as long as you have a drill press rather than trying to do it with a cobalt bit. And it's just, it's a hot mess doing it like that. And you end up, you end up with a pretty sloppy hole like I did. Um, and maybe maybe somebody else has a better way of doing that, but I think carbide would be the way to go for having to drill these out. So in the future, if I have to do it again, I'll definitely get a hold of a drill bit like that. I would also, the first time around, be more careful with the pins that I actually end up using in the knife, make sure they have a tighter tolerance. Um, because the ones I ended up using the first time uh, were, were kind of sloppy and a little thin. And because I had used them in the jig quite a bit, they just did not, they weren't as smooth inside the knife. And that resulted in things not opening and closing as well. Other suggestions as far as ways I would do this better. If you were going to purchase the knives to sacrifice to make this, the ideal thing I think would be, I mean, you know, ideally you'd find an 84 millimeter knife with a scissor layer in it. Um, those are hard to find and expensive now, but if you can, they do exist. Um, or you find one like at a flea market or a secondhand store or something, garage sale, I don't know, whatever. Um, that's the easiest way to do this because then you don't have to change the scissors or the back spring at all. You just have to put them in the cadet, um, which is pretty relatively simple. Um, the next best thing would probably be to find an older 91 millimeter knife with scissors in it that doesn't have the hook in the back layer. So the newer 91 millimeter knives have the hook in the layer behind the scissors, um, but the older ones don't have the hook. And you could actually use that back spring in this. You would just have to chop one end and move it over. Actually, I think it's on this side because the way it would close, right? Yeah, so you'd actually end up cutting the top thing and letting that be the spacer, kind of like what I did. Um, but you could use that back spring, which you might get a cleaner close if you did that. Um, and then the third best thing is to find yourself a back spring off of an 84 millimeter knife that's as thick as you can and as close to the scissor layer of a 91 millimeter scissor. And it worked, totally worked. Uh, but for sure, if you have to do it that way, make sure you thin down the scissors a bit to make them match that spring a little better because that definitely helped how well this closes when I thinned that back down. It also helped the back flush up better and just everything looked a lot neater after I thinned down the scissor layer a little bit. So anyway, a uh, couple of comparisons just for comparison's sake here. Uh, finished result on the uh, this, the cadet that I just put together. I don't know, what should we call it, a cadet? Cadet 2X, because the Cadet 2 uh, now is a, is a cadet that has two blades, which this has, and then the X would denote um, scissors, I suppose. So I'll call it a Cadet 2X. Um, it weighs 62.8 grams. So to compare that, here's a cadet weighing at 45.6. Um, probably the next most similar knife to this would be a Pioneer X, which is basically the same tools opener layer, scissors, big blade, but then instead of that small blade, you get the awl. Um, it weighs 93 grams. Uh, and then if you want to go with scales on the side, you know, the sides with the, the tools, with the toothpick and tweezers and back tools and that kind of thing, the super tinker is probably the next closest, and it weighs 83 grams. So we're 20 grams lighter than this, 30 grams lighter than this, and a bit heavier than that Cadet, but still pretty light and relatively easy to forget is in your pocket. Now to compare thickness, here's the Pioneer X, and if you put them right next to each other, it's quite a bit thinner. Uh, we can actually measure that here. Okay, so. 
about 15 millimeters on the Pioneer X. And on the Cadet with the scissors, only 11.5. So you lose a you shave off a couple of millimeters in thickness, but you shave quite a bit off in length. So lengthwise, of course, this is a 93 millimeter knife. So there's 93 millimeters there, as opposed to the 84 for this guy. So you know that's almost 10 millimeters shorter. And as far as pocket carry goes, I don't mind carrying the Pioneer X, but I really like to carry something a little shorter. Um, it, it, I just forget that it's there a little bit more easily. Uh, compared thickness on the Super Tinker, that guy's 17 millimeters, and a Cadet is quite thin at only 8.2. But not that much thicker at 11.8. Pretty easy to forget you got this guy in your pocket. I've been carrying it for a couple of days now. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. So, anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, if I can help you figure out how to do something like this yourself, shoot me a you know shoot me a message, uh, leave a comment, anything like that. Um, this is not a modification for the faint heart. You definitely need some time to tinker around and putz with things a bit to get all this to fit together and work out. I could probably do a second one in half the time now that I've done one, but I don't need a second one. Um, I definitely couldn't do this fast enough using the tools I have to make it worth doing it for like sales. Um, in order to be able to modify them and sell them, I'd have to charge so much it wouldn't be worth it. But that's just because I'm slow. Anyway, I hope this was useful. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.